在你仪表技术方式。From this smoking hillside on its south coast, Taiwan is sending a clear signal right across the Taiwan Strait to China. A provocative warning that Taiwan has no intention of being the next domino to fall. That unlike Hong Kong, Taiwan will not accept communist rule without a fight. Residents of a rebel territory that belongs to mainland China, or so China would have us believe. The people of Taiwan live in a fragile state of de facto independence, neither able to declare their independence nor willing to succumb to China's communist regime. Tonight, in the southern city of Gaosheng. The voice of independence will be beamed to TV sets around the country. It's the launch of Formosa TV, a new non-government station. In a show of goodwill and media savvy, Taiwan's president Li Tanghui is making an appearance, standing alongside FTV's chief, who also happens to be a member of Taiwan's main opposition party, the pro-independence. Democratic Progressive Party. <laughs> Taiwan's president has drawn a barrage of fire from mainland China, which accuses him of being a closet pro-independence man. His appearance here tonight will fuel such speculation, especially given the man by his side has been harnessing anti-China sentiment in Taiwan in the lead-up to the Hong Kong handover. The Taiwanese people want to remain independent as it is now. They don't want China to come to take over Taiwan. We have developed our own political, social, religious uh, system and our, our own way of life. So we don't like China to come to destroy our way of life and our existing system. 30 years in the United States gave Trong Chai a taste for jogging and freedom. He wants to see Taiwan steer its own path. To deliver the message, he set up Formosa TV, a combination of this 24-hour cable news service and a general news and programming channel. They proudly broadcast primetime news in the local Taiwanese language. I don't want to, to say that our TV station brought independence, but we we'll say our TV station would we'll work for the interests of Taiwan and for the people of Taiwan. So if the people on Taiwan don't like China to come to take over Taiwan, and that will be our position. 
While the chairman wouldn't spell out the station's pro-independence platform, behind the scenes, a senior station manager told me bluntly that was station policy. But his TV station is not the only way Dr Chai has garnered pro-Taiwan sentiment. He's also behind the anti-China movement, so vocal in the lead-up to the handover. The Chinese government in the past has, has always promised that they will not they will not um, use force against other Chinese people, and yet when you look at what they did in Tiananmen Square, it certainly raises a lot of concerns about if they treat their own citizens like that, how will they treat the people of Taiwan? Shamelessly cashing in on the foreign media contingent in Hong Kong, the Say No to China movement deliberately staged its protests to draw journalists to Taiwan in the lead up to the handover. No, no, we are not going to celebrate. That would not be fair to the people of Hong Kong. Why? Why? Yeah, because I, I say I'm sorry to see that they will live under communist regime. Because democracy is a way of life. And they have lived this kind of life for one or two centuries. Okay, now they have to live under a totalitarian system, a communist system. And so that will be a big change for the people in Hong Kong. So that's why I feel sorry for them. The relationship has always been complicated. Taiwan and China are irresistibly tied by race and a strong interdependence on each other's economies. Neither wants to sever those ties, but Taiwan doesn't want to lose its political and social freedoms into the bargain. Today's festival in Taipei is a people's celebration. Time to dust off the dragon boats for another year of races, for families and co-workers to indulge in a little community spirit. They may not feel it yet, but the delicate balance of the Taiwan-China relationship has just been altered. Now China has the weight of Hong Kong on its side, and with the handover complete, Taiwan will have to be better prepared to defend itself. This is Taiwan's multi-billion dollar insurance policy. It's military, led by a strong air defence network. Today, the top brass are celebrating and showing off their latest purchase, five French-made Mirage jet fighters, $400 million worth of aircraft, and the first of a batch of 60. These are a small part of a formidable defence capability specifically designed to repel an attack by mainland China. The Hong Kong handover has already fired nationalism in China. There's a fear here that sentiment will inflame impatience for a united China. They have been uh, uh, beefing up their uh, uh, military forces purchasing weapons, uh, more modern uh, weapons, and also undergoing uh, constant uh, training. And uh, as I said, they have uh, never abandoned the idea of using force. We have been uh, urging them that uh, we should uh, start some kind of a dialogue leading to the cessation of hostilities, maybe sign a peace accord. They have never responded to that. So uh, it remains to be seen. We have to keep our guard. The shadow cast by Beijing is felt by the Taiwanese at an early age. The 4,500 students here at the Shurda Senior High School in Taipei have fought to secure a position in this prestigious government school. Thank <laughs> you. 
case is three. I'll repeat after me. Occasionally. Occasionally. 17-year-olds Rudy Chuang and Steve Chung are both planning to study law after graduating high school. Their English class today is accompanied by another subject not on most school agendas. <laughs> All students in Taiwan are taught military training. The boys will go on to give two years compulsory military service. Although Rudy and Steve think two years is a long time to serve in the army, neither resents the compulsory training. It's China's market power, not its military, that poses a more immediate threat. The port of Kaohsiung, Taiwan's biggest and one of the top three container ports in the world. I find a huge bustling freeway with non-stop sea traffic. Taiwan's economic prowess has been built on its foreign trade, and its trade built on shipping. These waters leading to the Taiwan Straits have also led to a symbiotic connection with the mainland. China needs the massive investment poured in by the Taiwanese. Taiwan simply needs the business. Taiwanese businesses invest billions of dollars annually in China, so much so the Taiwanese government is running scared and has just announced a new cap on investment, much to the disgust of big business. Uh, if we uh, develop into a situation that we are uh, economically overly dependent on the Chinese mainland, uh, that could have political consequences. Such as? Such as, for instance, uh, uh, they can utilize this uh, economic uh, relationship to force us to make any kind of a political concessions, etc. Or hope to mobilize this uh, uh, private sector to urge the government to change its policy, etc. I think that's possible. The giant economic entity of Hong Kong and China now has Taiwan worried about how it can possibly compete. In turn, Hong Kong will provide unwelcome political leverage for China to further isolate Taiwan, forcing countries to choose between their formal ties with Hong Kong or Taiwan. Unfortunately, Beijing today chooses to adopt a zero-sum attitude as an either-or choice for third parties. Uh, we think it's uh, regrettable but we shall uh, continue to work to improve our relations with other countries. The images flashed before them on the 8th anniversary of Tiananmen Square brought these Taiwanese an uncomfortable reminder of their worst fears. They'll be watching Hong Kong long after the handover ceremony to see how Hong Kong's democracy fares and how China uses what could so easily be an economic and political weapon against Taiwan. Or whether they can dare hope China remains so preoccupied with Hong Kong that Taiwan can continue unhindered down its own path toward a time when change in China might make the dream of reunification possible. No, we are not Hong Kong. Hong Kong cannot decide its own fate. We, we do not wish to live under any kind of a communism. And we detest any kind of one-party dictatorship. 
Uh, we are prepared to defend our freedom and prosperity.